This is video three of Omen Mesa Saga The Telling. I'm James. I'm Joe. Alright. This is, yeah, this is, a, this is a little bit different, but I'm going to have a couple different uh, co-hosts here with me you know, throughout the 500 plus episodes. We last left off with uh, culture and war, and now some new stuff is going on. Sanford becomes the protector and diplomat of all life in the universe. Yeah, because, you know, he's super old, he knows a lot, and he, he, just, he just travels the universe and talks to all races and let like, hey, we're not the only aliens. <laughs> <laughs> There's other life out there. There's other life out there, and now everybody knows, right. so they can all connect with each other uh -huh. on Sanford Book. It's kind of a, <laughs> <laughs> a form of unity. Uh, yeah. Yes. English speakers being the most stubborn convince every race to learn and speak English. Kind of, kind of a, you know, as a universal connection between all people. Sanford speaks English, so he understands it, but, and although English is probably the hardest, they, they're just so stubborn. Okay. <laughs> those, oh, those English speakers. So, so everybody in the universe, uh, by law, has to communicate by English first with each other. Okay, right, yeah. But why English? Budgetary reasons. <laughs> I speak English. Okay. I speak English. It's just so much easier. Uh, yeah. The greenhouse die out, yeah. leaving only one remaining. The council grant him immortality, and he, Hexel Desimon, yeah, That's creates close. the dead world. What is the dead world? Uh, okay, so the dead world. There's, there's been other realms of which souls go to when they die. But the Grihas are, are kind of ancient beings, they're, they're some of the first, and they developed early, but they also died out. But one of them stays alive, and the council like, likes to preserve life, so if a race is dying or extinct, mostly, like if there's one left, sometimes four left, they'll, uh, they'll grant them immortality. This particular Grihas Hexel uh, took advantage of his immortality and created a world of which other souls can come when they die, so they don't move on to like heaven or hell. He can actually keep them there, and he gains strength for all who are in his realm. Okay. And he keeps them there until like the council can can pull them out back into the world in case they're needed again. So it's mostly like strong fighters and stuff, Pe people with a lot of power. Okay. And he writes out contracts with with other other world deities. Oh, okay. Says I, I want that one in my realm when he dies. I need this. I need, I, I need him. <laughs> what is this? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. A sentient dinosaur. <laughs> ah, a sentient dinosaur type, growing intelligence and strength. They learn to fly and manipulate energy. They can travel between planets now uh, without a vessel. So other races learn from the brownie, but make the brownie mad, and they become galactic bullies. Oh yeah. And they, they just become <laughs> so stereotypical, angry dinosaur. <laughs> the Alfreds of Meso bring the human-like race from living to Mesa. The race is named the Mesons, and you know what, Meson sounds better than Mason. Messons? Yeah, because, well, never mind. <laughs> okay, okay, I, no, I get you. The race is named the Messons, and they treat the Alfreds as their protector gods. Yes. Um, Alfred, in, the word Alfred, or the name Alfred, ends up becoming uh, an alternate name for God. The, the moon livering was dying, so the race on it was going to die, but the, the Alfreds, best Alfred, he has the ability to create wormholes, and he moved all of those sapien beings to their planet. Oh, okay. And they protect them on their islands, the north, south, east, and west. Okay. Tataeans. Tataeans and Kaeoans. Kaeoans. Okay. Tataeans and Kaeoans, master energy manipulation. Tataean, Tataeans create Tatoa energy. And Kayuans create full body energy. My A's look like O's. They, I, they just look like O's. What is, what is Tetoa energy and the difference between Tetoa and full body energy? Okay, so, well, as a visual presentation, 
body energy, which is the most common one, which is just the energy of your body. Anything that you consume is converted into energy that you can use to go throughout your day. But if you can harness this power instead of irradiating energy and just losing it, you can hold it inside you as a reserve and then shoot it out as a yellow color. Okay. Because that's like the aura of most fighters' body is like a yellow and they, they can use that. Uh, Tataeans discovered that life itself has its own energy source and Tataeans being immortals can infinitely access this without draining their body energy and it comes out as a green wave. Hmm. Okay. And so they developed this technique that shoots their immortal life energy and can never drain them. Now if other races use this who actually do have life expectancy they will get older faster and die. Oh, okay. Kaolins, they discovered a way to use your entire body's energy as one attack, and the intensity moves from yellow to red, and it encompasses your body and fires out from a center point. The geek master energy manipulation and start to call themselves gods. Yeah, see, this kind of happens in a progress. You can tell who the smartest people are by who mastered flight and energy first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, first it was like the dinosaur guys, they, they developed sentience, even though the Tataeans already had it, they discovered energy, and then the Tataeans and the Kaoans were like, oh hey, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Thanks for the idea, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. and, and then the geek, who are also really smart and really powerful, uh, learned that this was going on, and they, they worked really hard on it too, and they, they mastered it. So... One named Pidgey claims his own planet. Piggy. Sorry. Piggy. One named Piggy claims his own planet and looks after the dead, who are not sent to the dead world or right. elsewhere. It's he. He has his own contracts on certain fighters. Fighters with good hearts that he doesn't believe should be locked away at, in Hexel Desmond's world. The Shade Master, Shadow Arts, and one being becomes transcendent. So this, the shade, they, they developed techniques of which they can turn their, their bodies into smoke okay. and rematerialize how shade came in. I think Sanford called them the shade because of that. They, they mastered more techniques in the shadow arts and, act, and they created what is called the shadow arts. Okay. Now, and what else happened? Oh, and when one of the beings becomes transcendent, he actually refuses to rematerialize and stays in sort of a, a smoky, shadowy form, which makes him invincible. Ah, <laughs> I see, okay. The geek create mystical items and magic. They spread the items across the universe and predestine magic to people in the future. A very intuitive species, huh? Yes. Wolf-like creatures walk upright and become intelligent. Tataeans teach the wolf-like creatures how to build robotics. Shang. What is Shang? Shang is, uh, he's, he's one of the first baby uh -huh. Tataeans. Oh, okay. The Shade creates sentient robot. Robotics, uh, in, in this era is, is kind of like a, a race now. And the Shade actually end up creating a, a robot with its own mind, kind of like quantum com computing. They, they developed quantum computing. And before the wolf-like creatures who will inevitably, uh, later on here, surpass them. But uh, the sentient robot is, is important, and he comes in way, way later, because he's, he's devious. Ah, uh -huh. okay. There's so many devious characters. <laughs> <laughs> the Tataeans have children. Jake, Alex, George, Jr., Oehe, Dragnakaten, Hutao, Aminaya. That's one of them A's that's that we're <laughs> It's alright. Kai? Oh. Relic Halo. Relic. Created by a friend of mine. Dot. Naki. 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 I really no. want to throw the Kai's in there, huh? Yeah. The council is told by their creator to find two guardians. One to rule over them, one to protect them. Bushido and Jake. So he was chosen to also take the baby, the, the newborn baby Jake, like, in Tataeans, they don't care about their kids. Oh, okay. They're, they're, their kids are already super smart. They can start learning right out of the womb. 
Oh, okay. So they don't care about their kids. They don't have to take care of them. They don't eat. They don't sleep. They don't, they oh, don't breathe wow. air. They don't do anything. And uh, so, I don't know, it's just like Bushido shows up and he's like, hey, I need your baby. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's council business. <laughs> and, uh, and he's, yeah, so he, he trains, he trains Jake. The Tatane? What's his name? Uh, Ezekiel. Oh, okay. The Tatane Ezekiel travels to the New Earth to visit the humans. He doesn't return, in, and instead, a bunch of humans travel the universe in his ship, spread across the systems. Yes, they Ezekiel. steal his ship. <laughs> oh, okay. He, he parks it, they find it, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, look at this, and they fly. So they travel the universe in his ship, spread across the systems. It's, it's a couple of thousand humans, like, run off in his ship. It's a big ship. Oh, okay. It's, oh, okay. it's not like it was hidden very well. <laughs> he, like, parked it in the ocean, uh, you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's out in the ocean, but it's huge. It's in plain sight. <laughs> yeah. Ezekiel calls himself Sir George after losing his memory and starts to conquer Earth. Earth becomes an off-limits part of the universe. Yeah, that's George's fault. He, uh, he ruined it for everybody. Uh, Calvin Ezekiel George. His name's Calvin? Oh. <laughs> Calvin Ezekiel George. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, Calvin Ezekiel at first, and then, uh, uh, he, he lost his memory, which is, like, the only Tatayan ever to lose their memory, and he thought he was a human while he was on Earth, and because Earth became off-limits, nobody can go near it anymore, no one can go rescue him. The first Tatayan to, uh, just mess everything up for every other Tatayan. <laughs> <laughs> Bushido, a messin, chosen by the council. I won't remember that. I'll keep calling him a mason later on. During his training of Jake, Lumen, the one chosen to protect the council, dies from Lumen's sword. They each take their rightful places. They each take their rightful places. Yeah, see, this isn't... This is backstory that is actually in the comics, where... Bushido trains Lumen, because people want to know where Lumen came from, and he ends up telling this story of how he was trained, and how he killed the person who trained him on accident, because he didn't know it was wrong yet. Oh. They were, they were training with the sword, and Lumen had previously gra gotten granted a power by the council to be a better swordsman than like anyone, and so his abilities rose in this, this little practice bout, and he ended up stabbing Bushido through the heart. And, and didn't he, this is where he discovered what death even is, and he ends up killing Bushido. Cristal leaves Tateo on a spiritual journey. Just leave it at that. That's important. Just leave yeah. it at that. She's uh. the strongest Tatean. Sir George gathers enough fame and wealth to create a vast army and takes to the stars to rule the systems. It's not just a strong army, it's the best trained army. He's developed a system of war that doesn't kill people. And his training simulation also simulates that exact war scenario without killing people. Their suits and their weapons, which he has developed for the entire universe and spreads to everybody, so they can all handle their conflicts the same way. The, the lasers will disable the person inside the suit, and they're counted as a casualty, and can't participate in the fight anymore. And most of the time, people who have been shot in battle uh, decide to retire. Okay. And they actually do get a retirement. Oh, wow. It's, okay. it's their career. That's cool. That's so really battles cool. Are, are taking place with the same armor systems and the same weapon systems all over the universe, because he developed it and flew out to the universe and started conquering systems in this way. Wizardist isolates himself. Coloco. Coloco? Coloco. Coloco studies all fighting styles, energy and magic techniques. Yeah, okay, so Wizardist and Coloco are Tataeans that for the longest time have been developing fighting styles and techniques like that. Well, Wizardist decided that since all Tatanes are like super smart, they can see a technique being used and figure it out with, with just a matter of minutes or, or a, like very few attempts, they can do it. Mm -hmm. And Wizardus wants to develop things further, which makes them more dangerous, but doesn't want anyone else to learn it because he doesn't know if it's 
okay for others to learn. So he isolates himself and doesn't let anybody interfere with his training while he develops these techniques. Oh, okay. But Coloco, on the other hand, uh, he doesn't agree with this. And he is much more proficient at it. And he ends up calling himself uh, the god of war. The and his name literally means death in their language. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The geek discovered time travel. They do. The geek, that's, that's important. That is, that is definitely important. The geek discovering time travel. And that will come up later. Now, all they did so far was discover that it's possible. Okay. And eventually, you're, you're going to see what they do with that. And it, it's going to be great. Because they're just, they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to change anything. They're smart people. But other people are going to get their hands on their technology. Well, that's going to cause quite a bit of chaos. Right. And also, being, being geek... And, and creating these magic items that they already know are predestined for certain people, they know that their their time travel is going to be used by others. Uh -huh. So they've put it, they've put their own precautions in it. Okay. Which is going to come up later, and you'll, you'll understand why the geek, even though they know this is going to happen, still end up doing it. So, uh, you know, come up with some questions, and I'll give you some answers in uh, an in-between question and answer video for video number three. Yeah, I think I think that was I think that was horrible. That was horrible. No. <laughs>